I am Brooke Elward and I am doing an article presentation with Caitlin Simpson and we are doing the article presentation on why good projects fail anyways. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Simpson and these are all the concepts and ideas that our article talked about. So these concepts and ideas include white space risks, rapid results initiatives, customer relationships management, leadership balancing, horizontal work streams and integration, and standard operating procedures. The first topic that is talked about is white space risks. So the article definition um, of a white space risk is planners leave gaps in the project plan by failing to anticipate all the project's required activities and work streams. But that is a lot of gibberish to me, so I wrote it down in English. It is the required steps that are not identified in advance. So then the integrating steps together is difficult or impossible to determine what steps are what and where they're needed and how long they're going to take. I connected this to our chapter three that we learned in class called project management. You can't do a work breakdown structure because it is unsure until the project is complete, in which case you could do a work breakdown structure, but you are uncertain of these steps, which is why you put a white space in them. The Jant charts are very inaccurate because they can't allocate the unknown time. So like I said earlier, you can't determine how long a task is going to be if you don't know what the task is or where it's going to go. In network planning models, you usually want to create the critical path method, which determines which path will take the longest and is most important um, for slack time. With this issue of a white space, you have the risk of not knowing which path is the, is the critical path. Um, the step does not exist like at all finding the critical path because you don't know where this step is missing that you put a white space for. You could calculate the earned value management uh, using a white space. Um, scheduling, you could still determine as long as you know that there's going to be a project there. It is difficult, but it can be correct and you can have an estimate, even though it is easier when knowing the white spaces. Now, how is this relevant to today's practices in business? Um, so there's an example in the article of the World Bank Project Plan. The whole goal of the World Bank Project Plan was to just improve productivity of farmers. Um, and so they started to set up a group and teams together. So an example is they had a team called to set up private sector market and agricultural support services, which is seen on the image on the right. Um, and this is actually a white space risk because this does not include the activities written down within it. So an activity within it that is not written down would be developing a system of coupons to subsidize farmers' purchases. That is within this group, but it is not written down anywhere, which makes it a white space risk. Rapid results initiatives are the bread and butter of this article. A rapid results initiative is when a small team of people are tasked with delivering results of a large-scale project on a small portion of the target population. These teams are a model for when the initiatives are rolled out on a large scale. Three key components of a rapid results initiative are that they are result-oriented, fast, and vertical. Each of these components go hand in hand to prevent a good project from failing. So let's go a little more in depth on how rapid results initiatives are result oriented. The article itself defines it as a group is intentionally commissioned to produce a measurable result rather than a recommendation, analysis, or partial solution. Therefore, while these groups might be on a small scale, they need to produce a measurable result to get the full benefit of a rapid results initiative. Results oriented initiatives connect to our class and the real world through chapter six, managing quality, and chapter three, project management. Results-oriented initiatives work well with customer relations management because it helps businesses identify a customer's needs in a way to better satisfy them. Results-oriented initiatives test this by allowing project managers to test whether an overall plan will be successful and within the time frame. This reduces the white space risk of a project, thus increasing its chances to succeed. These initiatives also provide a tangible benefit in a short period of time, no matter what happens to the project, and is also good for team morale. 
This is relevant to business practices because it speaks about increasing productivity as a results-oriented initiative. Our article focuses on increasing productivity in Nicaragua, a country in Central America. The three main initiatives that our article focused on specifically were to increase the milk production in Leon in 120 days from 600 gallons to 600 gallons a day. They also had an initiative to increase the weight of pigs by 30% in 100 days by feeding them enhanced corn seed. And lastly, to provide technical support to 150 farmers in an area known for drought in 100 days. Any of the results gained from this results-oriented project design would help better the lives of millions of people throughout Nicaragua. Okay, on to the second com component of rapid results initiatives and how they must be fast. The article defines it by stating, projects generally last for no longer than 100 days. They deliver quick wins and are more and the more important value of these initiatives is that they change the way the teams approach their work. The whole point of these initiatives is to be concise and find the most effective way that a team can do its job as well as formulate creative responses and solutions to these problems. An interesting connection to how rapid results initiatives must be fast is by looking at chapter seven, process strategies, or more specifically, the process strategy engineer to order. While many of you are probably scratching your heads thinking there is nothing rapid about the process strategy engineer to order because it's the longest, which is exactly right. Engineer to order is the longest process strategy because the product has not been designed or started production, the production process. The engineer must take all the requirements and come up with a creative and effective solution. This allows the process to be flexible and meet all the requirements of the consumer and the purchaser. The engineer must design and test several options before finding the best solution, just like rapid results initiatives. While it does not always have to be the fastest solution to produce a product, trial and error is fast paced and essential to get these initiatives the best results. So how does being fast relate to today's business practices? If a business cannot receive results at a fast rate, they will become obsolete and fall behind the curve. In this case, the article focused on creative and effective solutions. One such initiative was struggling. The initiative to help provide technical support to 150 farmers in an area of drought was providing to be a struggle. By day 80, only half the slots were filled and the team was becoming a bit disheartened. However, a quick and creative new process was put in motion. Team members jumped into their cars and trucks and drove out to these villages and from loudspeakers announced that technical support would be provided to farmers who signed up. In no time, all the, spot, all the remaining spots were filled, allowing the initiative to succeed. Without this quick thinking, the initiative would have fallen short. Last but not least, the third and final rapid results initiative is that it must be a vertical effort. The article defines it as they encompass a slice of several horizontal activities implemented in tandem in a very short time period. By using the term vertical, we suggest a cross-functional effort. Therefore, this means the initiatives must include people from different parts of a company or different organizations that work together in a short time period. This relates to what we learned in class by looking more in depth at chapter three, project management. Managing any project is a struggle and it involves juggling several aspects such as planning, scheduling, and limiting any unnecessary outcomes. Without a solid plan, a project will automatically fail. However, uh, once a plan is implemented, changes can be made to make it more effective and efficient. A similar style of management that encompasses some of these vertical cross functionalities 
is the metrics project structure. A metric project structure works across several different functional areas of a company, very similar to how a vertical structure works. And it also holds the project manage manager accountable for any and all of the problems or results that the team gains. These are key concepts in the rapid results initiatives used in cross vertical cross-functional teams. One initiative is the prime example of how vertical cross-functionality can help change lives. The initiative was to increase milk production in Lyon. Farmers were only producing 600 gallons a day of grade A quality milk. This milk was then purchased by the largest private dairy company, Parmalat. So the team wanted to increase the daily productivity of these farmers to 1,600 gallons of milk a day, almost triple of what they would normally produce. Soon, team members began to realize that it was not that the farmers could not produce 1,600 gallons of milk a day because they were already doing that. The problem was that the farmers had to dump most of the milk because it was not grade A quality milk. The team decided to invite a representative from Parmalat, the dairy company, to join the team. While the team already consisted of different government, agricultural representatives, farmers, and World, Mem World Bank members, the only, only a representative from Parmalat could teach the farmers the standards of the company. The representative told the farmers that with proper hygiene practicing practices, the milk would be grade A quality. Before farmers changed their hygiene practices, they were only driving their dairy shipments to Parmalat twice a week. Now that farmers were producing 1,600 gallons a day, they didn't have enough space to store the milk. Instead of buying expensive fridges to prevent the milk from spoiling, Parmalat suggested that the farmers drop off their dairy shipment daily, thus not adding an expensive burden. By adding a single member to the team, uh, with a different perspective, the project became a success. So customer relation management did not have an actual definition within the article, so I found a Wikipedia definition, which is just as confusing as the article made it. Uh, it says, a process in which a business or other organizations administers its interactions with customers, typically using data analysis to study large amounts of information. Let's put it in English. It's how effectively your employees and the rest of the business interact with your customers, whether it's through an email, through phone calls, if it's in person with surveys, text messages, etc. To connect this to class, I chose from chapter six, managing quality. You have to have a good customer relations management to figure out how to have a good total quality management. Because if you want to have your overall quality be good, then you need to have one step of the management below it to be good. Once you figure out what the customer wants through your customer relations, when it is a positive time, then you can figure out what other areas to excel the product in. Without a good customer relations management, you could raise your total quality management overall, but you could raise it even further by increasing just this. So an example in today's business practices is let's say you want to double your sales revenue. So you could use the traditional project management approach. You just have one team do the research and install software packages while another team is analyzing different ways that the company can interact with their customers or um, different ways that they do interact with their customers. Uh, and let's say you have like a third team and they are developing training programs. So these are three different ways that we can relate to the customers. Um, but within this, one of the groups, the salespeople, they just don't see the benefit of entering the required data into the system. And they refuse to. So you're throwing off your, your customer relations management rates. I'm also going to talk about leadership balancing. In the article, it says, a team put together to balance rapid results initiatives, spread from insights from team to team, and blend everything into an overall implementation strategy. Uh, rapid results initiatives were explained earlier. Um, and if you're confused, you can go back to those slides. But we're going to put this in English and not use those big words. So um, what is it? It's a team that's put together by a company to take the blame or investigate the statistics among socials, um, spread your information, and create an overall plan for what you want to do with the business, employees, and customers. So I actually connected this to two chapters that we did. Chapter 1, Operations and Productivity, and then Chapter 3, Project Management.
For chapter one, your leadership balancing is very important because you have to include your operations management to create set activities to transform your inputs to outputs. And In basic wording, leadership is the place that determines what is happening where. If leadership management can take control of things, they contribute about 52% of the annual increase. But that is if they only take it into their own hands. For chapter three, when you're actually in the middle of making a project, the leadership balancing has to juggle portfolios and projects and make these decisions that happen throughout or otherwise they won't have decisions made or the decisions made will not be educated. Leaderships also have to balance the slack time to determine how long it's going to take a project or activity to complete. An example from the article is they tried to get better milk from cows. So they wanted quality over quantity. So the milk productivity leadership team discovered that they needed to educate farmers in their clean milking practices because the way that they were milking was causing the infected milk to occur. So leadership created an overall training program for these farmers about clean practices. Leadership management worked with the CEO and they were still unsatisfied with the pace of good milk making it to stores despite the amount of more milk making it to stores. So they tested some vertical approaches and continued to extend the process of the leadership team meeting up. Uh, after this, they had implemented that training system and they yielded more than $50 million in sales by the end of the year. Horizontal work streams and integration are important factors in running a business. Cambridge Dictionary defines horizontal management as a way of organizing a company in which there are few to no different levels of management. Therefore, a manage it is a management style that supports creativity and collective effort. Horizontal management is one of the most well-used management styles because it is the most cost-effective way to work. Horizontal work streams, as I mentioned, are the most commonly used because they focused on cost rather than the fast pace and expensive results that a rapid results initiative does. These companies that use horizontal work streams primarily focus not on a quick win, but on a well thought out long term project structure. In some cases, departments are sectioned off in self contained teams to prevent outside input. This can cause a problem with the projects that span several departments. It can lead to a project costing more money, taking more time, or a solution that does not function as it was intended to. Some companies put added pressure on one functional area of a business, which is the lead, which can lead to employee unrest. This in turn can cause high turnover rates and a lack of company morale. Other companies find a way to integrate both vertical and horizontal management teams. These companies are often the most efficient because horizontal teams can still do their day-to-day -day job while helping with the occasional needs of a vertical team. For these reasons, businesses struggle with finding an effective and efficient management style. The integration of teams can be extremely important to businesses looking to implement rapid results initiatives. One initiative I mentioned before about supplying technical support to 150 farmers in an area of drought works hand in hand with a horizontal management team. After the team members came back from their drives to the villages telling villagers about this new service, they got in contact with their horizontal management team. The horizontal management team was, was keeping a list of all the activities and strategies the vertical team was using that gained a positive result. The list included training that needed to be created to teach the farmers and the experts that were going to teach the classes. The newest addition to this list was that the news of the program was going to have to be verbally spread to different villages. Because of the horizontal and vertical team members working together in tandem, this project was an overall success. Our final topic is standard operating procedures. The article definition states it as developing training standards and devising a system for standardizing currently disparate automated reports. I didn't know half those words. Put it in English for me. Uh, it's just creating an overall list of pretty much the stuff that happens during the operation and then reporting the data. With these simple words, I was able to connect it to chapter 16 of lean operations. So operating standard operating... 
so standard operating procedures can be put into place to have a good production system, which is the whole lean idea. So eliminate waste, remove variability, and improve throughput. 5S's technique are uh, standard in many businesses, and this is an example of the standard operating procedures put into place. If you watch the video about um, Alaskan Airlines, they used the 5S's and they made a standard operating procedure. And when everyone was practicing these 5S's, they were much more productive. Uh, Just-in-time batches, Kanban, and lean sustainability are just some examples of standard operating procedures. But if we're going to make it relevant to business practices that isn't just the Alaskan Airline video. A big example is failing areas of business. So the rapid results teams were set to focus on these failing areas to start out and just see what is happening. They would look for opportunities to generate knowledge, which means that they were looking for something to learn from and how to change it. They started doing a guess and check method to apply their choices of standard operating procedures to see if they'd actually help or hurt or just result in a null. From these results, they got valuable lessons and helped the larger objective, whether the lesson was that standard operating procedures were fine or if they should implement some. 